Just ending the first week of August here on our farm, August 9th, and it's starting to cool off a little bit. And I thought, you know, maybe we'll go over what it looks like to do a schedule on a mushroom farm and what we're looking to do in 2024. We've had a lot of ups and downs this year, and it's kind of made me realize that we need to tighten up how we do things here, just so that we can focus more on profitability and maybe get a little bit more away from all the fun stuff and just kind of do that in small batches. So that's coming out in this video. I also wanted to, to uh, inform everyone here that we're doing a giveaway for our mentorship program. About 10 days ago, we uh, went over an email that someone sent me and this person had an opportunity to reach out and they would have won a one week mentorship on our, on our farm here. And unfortunately we did not hear from this person. So I have another email. Stay tuned in the end of this video where we're gonna read this email. And if this is you, you are welcome to have one week on my farm here in Summerland, British Columbia, either in 2023 or the following season in 2024. So if you know anything about me, I hate schedules. I hate being tied down. I like the flexibility of life and, and just kind of figuring out what to do every day. And I've always done that on my farm, but we're starting to realize, especially with the shifting and weather patterns that we really need to have a clear direction, what we want to do every month uh, moving forward in 2024. So we're going to talk about the dreaded word scheduling and what we plan to do in 2024. So if you are unfamiliar with mushroom farming in general, mushroom farming is a very challenging labor intensive farming practice. And what we do is kind of like the next level up. We're a seasonal mushroom farm. So we're matching specific strains with the weather and that weather can change drastically month to month. And we need to have strains that have a wide temperature fruiting range so that we have lots of flexibility in what we're doing here on our farm. So all the fun stuff is typically more difficult to grow and it has uh, tighter temperature ranges, doesn't like the, the, the fluctuating temperatures that you might get from from colder nights and, and hotter days when the sun is out. So stuff like that would be king oyster, anoki, maitake, uh, you know, even like chestnut, piapino, lion's mane to some degree. And, and some of these, we've come up with strategies to uh, be more flexible and, and we can still take advantage of the, of the seasonal temperatures out here and still produce quality mushrooms. But some of those mushrooms are next to impossible to grow with a smaller window when we only have you know maybe two or three weeks of consistent temperatures and then it gets too warm or too cold so over the years we've struggled with developing ways to do things on our farm and we've always had acceptable loss with certain things until this year when we experienced a complete wipeout of our king oyster and i already know that king oyster prefers colder weather and we know that the the temperature threshold is about 26 celsius in our greenhouse which usually means about 29 30 celsius outside of our greenhouse starts being too hot and then if we have a longer duration like days weeks of of hotter temperatures above that that peak threshold then the king oysters die and We've experienced this in the past, but then it gets cold again. And examples of this would be growing like in May and then it gets cold in June. And we're able to still maybe save it and get a second crop and still, you know, make some money, just not as much. And we have tighter margins and that's been okay. But this year that we went through a couple different cycles where it was unusually hot and then it got cold and then it got really hot fast again. And every time we tried to grow King Oyster, it got completely wiped out to the point where I just don't see the why we would grow it here. We it, we should more focus on on strains that have a, a better 
uh, temperature range that we can deal with those fluctuations and then maybe we do a little bit of king just for fun to kind of see how the year's going and then offer that to our clients who want to buy blocks from us and fruit it maybe in a more controlled environment so we're still going to do all the fun stuff but for scheduling for us especially for next year what we're going to focus on is and, and again like all of these common names are names that most farms just kind of come up with and then the latin is the specific mushroom strain but then there's different variations so specifically to my farm what i'm talking about right now especially with oyster mushrooms they might be called something different or they might have be a very different strain that behaves very differently in in certain conditions so what we're talking about on our farm you can buy these cultures on our website and we we do bundle deals or you can buy them individually but they're very specific to my farm and we've done all the research you know we're talking like 10 years of research i started this farm in 2013 it's 2023 now we've done the work so if if you guys want some quality strains this is it and and this is i think i'm going to put this in a bundle on my website and i'm not sure what we're going to call it i'm going to put something across the screen i don't have a name for you right now but what we're doing is in the spring next year we're going to focus on our tree oyster and our blue oyster and then we're going to transition into our elm oyster and yellow oyster those are the cold and hot varieties but then we got two strains that we can pretty much grow year round now and we've done the work in figuring out how to do that and that would be our field oyster and lion's mane and and all you need to do is add more moisture increase the flow meter in our farm so that we have more water pumping into the greenhouses through our fans and then these strains even if even in those high temperature peaks they can still handle it and they just need more water whereas other strains they get stressed and at that peak stress they, you start seeing blotch bacteria and 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 maybe like pale colors and they just don't produce well these specific strains uh our field oyster which is 081 and our lion's mane which is 069 the field oyster we got off steve russo at a quebec quebec farmers like to grow this specific strain under tomato plants in the shade and they do companion planting where this mushroom feeds the tomato plants and the tomato plants feed the mushrooms you know really great relationship and the lion's mane is a wild clone that we got from portland maine and this particular strain just rocks and if it's starting to get hot all you need is more moisture so really lean uh way of growing next year the tree oyster is our 005 this strain originated from paul stamets i'm assuming it's an east coast variant of the pleurotus austriatus and it has really dark brownish purple hues and when it's really cold it almost gets like a striping pattern it's absolutely beautiful and the blue oyster is lambert's every mushroom farmer likes the blue oyster lambert's and we've just been so impressed it it does really well in the cold really dark blues which uh will then pale out as we get to those peak temperatures but it still fruits and it doesn't really blotch out so a really great strain that we can push all the way up into peak summer and then uh the field oyster i love it all throughout the summer so we're just going to grow that strain year round but i really like our elm oyster which is a pure white oyster variety this is a commercial elm oyster strain that uh, lots of people grow this specific strain came from jay schindler at fungi for the people shout out to you if you're watching this video uh jay i learned uh way back in like 2012 2013 when i was just getting going and this is one of the strains that uh, i just fell in love with really giant large uh, clusters that uh, it's just a really meaty beautiful pearl white mushroom that does so awesome in the summer here so and then and then the yellow oyster that we're gonna grow in the summer this strain is uh it just needs to have enough shade and enough moisture and it keeps producing and we might get uh, three even four flushes off a block before we clean a greenhouse it just keeps going and we just keep uh, cutting the bag so that the mushrooms can pop out specifically with the yellow oyster it just likes forming where it hasn't dried out yet and hasn't been exposed to air 
but it senses there's air on the other side of the plastic. We just cut a little slit and it pops out. So really unique way of growing this one, whereas all the other oysters, we just cut a slit in the bag and it just continuously pops out. We do two flushes and then the block is spent. So this is the scheduling that we're looking to do in 2024. And we've done all the research on these strains. The, uh, the yellow oyster, we, uh, that we call that zero to four. And this is, a, this is actually a yellow oyster that we cloned that uh, mushroom growers like to grow on the West Coast here in British Columbia. I don't really know too much about it. But other than that, those are all the codes. So 005 and 078 is our blue oyster. And then 024 20, for the yellow and 006 for the elm. And then the field oyster is 081 and the lion's mane is 069. So we're gonna do a bundle pack if that interests you guys and we're gonna do a really good deal because I really like these strains and I wanna make sure that we have something awesome to offer everyone here on the YouTube channel. So we're gonna do some promotional deal with a promo code just for this strain if you're watching this video, or for these strains if you're watching this video and it'll be on our website and then you can use the code and save even more money because we're just excited to offer it for you, okay? So, um, I want to get into this email and like I said we uh, we offered a mentorship to someone about 10 days ago and we didn't hear from this person so we're gonna offer another one week mentorship on our farm and I'm gonna keep doing this I'm gonna keep reading emails and until and until somebody actually recognizes that they wrote this email to me and they, and they can get back to me we're just going to keep doing it and if you guys are not familiar with our mentorship program we offer hands-on learning on our farm we've been doing it for a very long time we take you throughout the whole business and the whole point is is that you're going to come here and get an experience that you're not gonna get anywhere else. You're, you really just become part of the team for the week. We work you really hard, but that's how you learn. And hopefully this experience helps you get your mushroom farm to the next level or it gets you started in business or, or anything. Just it, the whole point of this experience is that you have an opportunity to really learn and see what it takes to be successful. You know, we work really hard here. We've been doing this for a very long time and you know, it's important to understand what we do to achieve everything every day. And, and I, it's really difficult for me to show this on the YouTube channel. So it's an experience that, that we have been offering for a very long time. And it's a very fulfilling experience for me. I love teaching and meeting, meeting people from all over the world. It's, it's been a true eye-opener for me just to see all these people that we can help. So... I want to read an email here. <clears throat> this is from Michael Deacon. Michael, if, uh, if you wrote this email to me, and this email was written to me May of, uh, May 26 of 2022. So this, <laughs> this is over a year ago. And if for some, somehow you're watching this video, you have 10 days and if you are interested in learning, I want to offer you one week here on our farm. And what you wrote to me over a year ago, I'm just starting out in the world of mushroom cultivation as a hobby. I live in Ontario and had a question. Is your available blue oyster grain spawn suitable for using in a monotub system? I'm going to purchase a small tent and sl slash system, maybe the boom room or uh, ecosphere 2.0, but uh, wanting to try my first attempt in the meantime in an even simpler method, monotub or maybe a five gallon bucket or pail. Any advice in regards to a monotub pail method would be appreciated, i.e. grain spawn would be fine or maybe the sawdust spawn would be more appropriate uh, for monotub pail method for a beginner. When my kit is set up, I will purchase grain spawn and bags from you. Look forward to hearing back from you. Thanks, Mike. So, Mike, uh, you know, when you're just starting out, model tub, uh, buckets, those are all great ways to get going. And you're going to be using pasteurized materials. Typically, uh, that's going to be straws or, or cereal grains or some kind of pasteurized media. Like if you were... 
Uh, you could even do like secondary de decomposing strains and do like a peat moss cocoa vermiculite blend. But you're gonna you're gonna pasteurize this media for two hours and kind of hold it uh, at around 70 Celsius for two hours. And you can do that with steam. You could do b water uh, that you boiled and that let cool and then. Typically, you would boil the water and then put your cold substrate in and then it would kind of hover around that 70 Celsius mark and then put a lid on and have a temperature probe in there just to monitor temperatures, two hours, and then take everything out and let it drip dry and then inoculate. So e either method would be fine. We've, we've definitely done pasteurized materials on our farm before. And I've tried the bucket method and we used to sell max sealed bins. We're not a distributor for them anymore, but you know, it's, it's great ways to do it. It's easy to do. You can do it on a pot on the stove or you could get like a 55 gallon barrel and just kind of have some fun with it. And you don't need to spend a lot of money and just kind of get used to it. When you get into commercial production, it, it's, it's difficult to scale because you need a lot, uh, you need a lot of reusable containers that you have to wash and you have to pay someone to do that. And that's why mushroom farms, especially gourmet mushroom farms, typically go to the bags and they grow those in the greenhouses and we're no different than that. But to answer your question specifically, if, uh, if you're gonna use the, the pail or, or monotub method, you're gonna use pasteurized substrates, you're gonna to wanna to use grain spawn specifically. And, and the reason you use grain spawn is you're trying to increase the yield. Pasteurized substrates, they don't really have any food source to them and that's why they're pasteurized. When we're adding, like for us, we do the master's mix and that is 50% hardwood and 50% soy hull. And we need to sterilize that product. Otherwise you're usually gonna see molds pop up just because there's a lot more food in the substrate. And then if there's anything in there, it's just gonna run and digest and, and really eat that those soy hulls quickly. Uh, so pasteurized substrates, you're doing a high inoculation rate, usually 20% with grain spawn. And then uh, if you're doing uh, supplemented substrates that are sterilized like us, then we do cleaner methods. We use a flow hood like you see right behind me. And we're gonna do about a 5% inoculation rate with grain spawn, or we're gonna use sawdust spawn because it doesn't actually matter either way. We're not adding nutrition. The, the spawn in our case, is just running the mycelium and the bag already has all the food in it. So hope you hope that answered your question. I know I did write to you about a year ago, but I thought this was just a great question in general to talk on the YouTube channel. So Mike Deacon, or Mike De Deacon, if uh, this is you, uh, you know, I'd like to offer you one week on my farm. This is a really nice surprise. If, uh, if you are watching this video, you have 10 days from the time that I post it. And if, uh, if Mike doesn't respond, we'll be doing another one of these about 10 days from now. And if you are not familiar with what we do, just head over to our website. We sell spawn cultures, fruiting blocks, substrate. We offer our mentorship program. I even have a book. And if you guys want to use discount, save 100, you can save $100 off of our book, which is a business plan based off of what the fungus here. And this is just kind of what we've done over the years to be successful in this book. Uh, goes over all the different steps and I'm always revising it and trying to put as much information in there for you. And if you do take our mentorship course, the book comes with the course. We also give you some cultures, place to stay on my farm, and then hopefully uh, hopefully just uh, a long time friendship as well. That's the whole point when you come here. We try to uh, give you an opportunity to have a leg up in this industry, but also when I first started, it was just about meeting the right people so that I could be successful and, and then hopefully build from there. So that's all we're offering. So anyways, Michael, hope to see you on our farm. Hopefully you respond to this YouTube video and give me, a, give me an email. And uh, congratulations if you do see this video. And again, thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.